Hello everyone, Keyboard Alchemist here and welcome back to another Stable Diffusion tutorial. I always try to review and answer any comments left by my viewers, and a lot of times people will leave some fun ideas for me to try, such as, I see that you can in-paint something that already exists in the image, but what if I want to in-paint a parrot on the girl's shoulder? The answer is, yes, of course you can do that. Or, can I use Loras to in-paint a specific part of an image? For example, changing the girl's arm into a cyborg arm. The answer is, yes, you can do that as well. Then you might ask, okay, but how do you actually do it? Today, instead of explaining in words alone, I'm going to show you how to use some in-painting techniques to achieve these fun ideas. Now there are a lot of great ideas that are left in the comments, and I can't possibly cover them all in one video. But if you like this type of content, let me know in the comments and I will try to cover more of them in due time. Now let's go to the main course for today. First, let's make the parrot on shoulder picture. We need to download an extension called Photopia. I know it's spelled like photo and p, but people call it Photopia, I don't know why. In any case, this is a great photo editing tool for automatic 1111. It's just like having Photoshop or GIMP built directly in your web UI, and you can pass an image back and forth from image to image to Photopia, or vice versa. Thank you to viewer Steve Warner for pointing me to the extension a few months back. Here are the steps to install Photopia. Go to Extensions, then click on the Install from URL tab. Copy the Photopia GitHub link. I'll leave it in the video descriptions, and paste it into the first field here. Then click Install, and wait for the installation to finish. Once the installation is finished, Go back to the Installed tab. I like to keep my extensions up to date at all times. Yes, I know it's a disease. So I'll click Check for Updates, then Apply and Restart UI. Once the web UI restarts, you will see the Photopia tab at the top. Okay, now let's import the original image from PNG Info into Image to Image. We are going to get rid of the positive prompt and only keeping the negative prompts. Here I'm just trying to regenerate the image with original settings. Setting the denoising strength very low to 0.1 because I just want the image to be regenerated again with almost no change at all. Once the image is regenerated, click on this red bird icon to send the image to Photopia. You can do the following steps in Photoshop or GIMP if you are more familiar with those tools but I think Photopia is just as easy. And when you are done, you can click this button to transfer the image back to image to image. In Photopia, what I want to do is to just select the parrot and cut out the background in this image. There's more than one way to skin this cat, but I'm going to use the magnet selection tool. It's okay if the edges are a bit rough right now, we don't need to get it perfect. When you are done with selecting the parrot, Go to Select, then Inverse. Then do a Cut or Control X. This warning message is telling me that the image needs to be rasterized first. So then we can go to Layer, then Rasterize. Now we can do Edit Cut again to get rid of the background of the bird image. Then let's clean this up by erasing some of these jagged edges. Deselect or press Control D, then select the Eraser tool. You don't have to be super careful or neat about it. Close enough would be just fine. Oh, and don't worry about this piece of wood here. In painting, we'll take care of all of these little imperfections. Once you are done with the cleanup, move the parrot to a location on her shoulder. Then we can send this image back to image to image. After getting back to the web UI, click on InPaint to send it to the InPainting interface. Let's cover up the parrot with a mask. Notice that I am leaving some amount of padding on the edges of the parrot, meaning my mask is larger than the parrot. This is done such that we are giving the AI model some context with the surrounding pixels. I am using the DreamShaper 7 model to generate the parrot, and I will add Macaw Parrot to the positive prompt. The InPaint settings are mostly default settings, but pay special attention to the following settings. 
masked content should be set to original because we want the in-painting to stick fairly close to what's underneath the mask. We are going to use the whole picture setting for in-paint area. This doesn't mean that we will in-paint the whole picture, it just means that the model will use the entire picture as reference when it is generating the new image. I will generate a batch of four images with random seeds. Be sure to set the denoising strength to something a bit higher. I'm using an arbitrary number of 0.75 here for the first batch, but in a little bit I will show you how to pick the appropriate denoising strength value. When you are done with all your parameters, click Generate. Out of this first batch of images, I can tell that we don't have the right seed for our image here because I don't want the parrot to face away from the viewer. So let's re-roll this. Out of this second batch, the first image at least have the parrot facing the right direction. So let's use this seed by clicking on the recycle icon and continue on to the next steps. I'm going to use the XYZ plot script to test out a range of denoising strength values and pick out the best one for this image. Oops, I forgot to reset the batch count back to one. So I interrupted the image generation, set batch count to one, and then restarted the generation. Now, if you recall from my previous videos, a low denoising strength means fewer changes from the original image, and the higher the denoising strength, the more changes you will see. In this case, we can see that denoising from 0.15 to 0.35 were not enough to merge the parrot into the image, we can still see remnants of the wooden branch under the parrot's talons. But as the denoising strength increased, the wooden branch is gone, and the parrot started to look like it is a part of the picture, and not just a simple cut and paste job within Photoshop. Then as we increase the denoising strength past 0.65, we are starting to see distortions in the parrot. So this basically means that we can pick a denoising strength value that is somewhere around 0.45 to 0.55. In this case, I picked 0.45, turned off the XYZ plot script, then generated another batch of four images with random seeds. Here I would say if you liked the image that you had with the previous seed, you don't have to generate again with a random seed. You can just reuse the previous seed and generate your image with 0.45 denoising strength. But here I just wanted to see what another seed would look like. And it turned out pretty good as well. I'm going to show you what in-paint area, only masked, setting looks like. You can see that while in the only masked mode, the model is only referencing a portion of the area around the mask to generate the new images, as opposed to referencing the whole picture. Sometimes this will have some drawbacks, but in this case, because we already have a solid image of the parrot underneath the masked area, the result will not stray far from it. In fact, I see that the parrot's talons are a bit better with the only masked mode. So I'm going to use one of these images for my next steps. For this next part, we are going to use a different method to paint something new into the picture. Here is Our Lady with a parrot on her shoulder, but let's say that she is a pirate captain, and a pirate captain will need a hat befitting of her status. First, send this image with the parrot to in-paint sketch, then I'll use a brown color to draw the pirate hat, or at least a general shape of the hat because I suck at drawing with a mouse. Note the area of your sketch will influence what the in-painted hat will look like. Also, I didn't do it here, but you can totally add some additional patterns or colors to this sketch to define it a bit more. For this method, here are the important notes and settings. Put in pirate hat in your positive prompt. For the masked content setting, choose the fill option and not the original option since we want to add something completely new to the picture. When using the fill option, your denoising strength need to be set to a higher value, otherwise you will just get some noise. Here is a XY plot of denoising strength on the X axis and sampling steps on the Y axis to illustrate my point. We can see that as the denoising strength is too low, you will just get this blur in the shape of our sketched hat. Only when the denoising strength is 0.55 or higher does the hat start to materialize. We can also see that the sampling steps should not be too low. At 20 sampling steps, we are not getting enough details in the hat. I like the image at 80 steps and 0.75 denoising strength. So these were the values that I went with. In order to make my picture more cohesive and fix some of the minor imperfections in it, 
I will usually do a latent upscaling in image to image. It's fast and easy, and it takes care of minor issues in the image. And this also answers another question that I got previously. Someone said after inpainting the skin tone is different. Doing the latent upscaling would fix any inconsistencies that were introduced by all the inpainting steps and will make sure the skin tone of the body matches the face. If you like my videos, please click the like and subscribe buttons to help support this channel. Your likes and subscriptions are much appreciated and help me to grow this channel and continue making quality content. Thank you. Okay, now let's talk about how to inpaint a specific part of an image, like changing the girl's arm into a robotic arm using LoRa's. A LoRa is short for low rank adaptation. It is a training method to fine tune a stable diffusion checkpoint. It is a lot smaller in size compared to a checkpoint and it can be trained relatively quickly. Ideal for generating consistent styles, objects, characters, and in our case, robot arms. To inpaint the robot arm, we are going to download this real mechanical parts LoRa from Civit AI. I will leave a link in the descriptions. After downloading the LoRa, go to your automatic 1111 install folder, then the models folder, and click on the LoRa subfolder. If you don't see the LoRa subfolder, for some reason you can just create a new folder and rename it LoRa. Then put the RealMech Safe Tensor file into the LoRa folder. Come back to your web UI and click Refresh to see the newly incorporated LoRa. We are going to do a few quick things here to make using the LoRa a bit easier. Click on the hammer and wrench icon here, and let's add a short description to the LoRa properties page. Usually, in order to use a LoRa, you will need to type a keyword or activation word into your prompts. This is not always the case, but a lot of LoRa's do need a keyword to work. For this LoRa, the keyword is real mech. This was noted in the Civit AI download page. We are adding the keyword in this field so that we don't have to remember to add it to our prompts every time we want to use this LoRa. There are a lot of LoRa's out there, and this little feature is such a time saver. Now click Save. To use the LoRa, simply place your cursor in the positive prompt field, then click on the icon for the real mech LoRa. As we can see, the LoRa and the keyword we just saved are now both added to our prompt. Now it is good to go. One additional tip before we move on, you will likely download a ton of different LoRa's down the line. So in order to organize your collection better, I recommend adding a preview image to your LoRa. Here is one method to do it. Right click on an image that is representative of the LoRa, then choose Save Image As. In the Save Image window, navigate to your Stable Diffusion LoRa's folder, the same folder where you have saved this LoRa, then rename the image using the exact same name as your LoRa file. Here I just copied the name of the original LoRa file, but changed the file extension to .preview.png. Note, the image has to be saved as a PNG file, otherwise it won't work. Go back to your web UI and click the Refresh button to see the preview image. Okay, now back to our main objective. I will upload the image of the lady in the blue dress and send it to image to image in paint. Get rid of the previous positive prompts and add the real mech Laura and the words robot arm. Draw a mask at the location where the arm should be. As you can see, I am just defining the general region so it doesn't have to be very precise to begin with. You can always refine it later, which is what I did here. I didn't like the initial in painting results, so I enlarged the mask a bit. Keep in mind the size and shape of the in-painting mask will impact how your in-painting results will look. The important parameters for this task are as follows. Set the masked content to fill and set in-paint area to whole picture. Set resize mode to resize and fill. Use the width and height of the original image. Use a random seed and set the denoising strength to a higher value. Once your parameters are set, click generate. It's quite interesting if we look at the snapshots of the image generation process here on the right hand side. We can see that the AI model is generating a new image that is similar to our original image and then merging the portion of the new image that we have defined with the in-painting mask to our original image. Therefore, if the newly generated image has a different posture or stance than our original image, then the in-painting will look a bit off, such as in the case of image number two here. But if we look at image number three here, we can see that the new and the old images matched up pretty well. So in this case, we want to recycle this seed and try to tweak our other parameters a bit.
I generated a XY plot of denoising strength versus sampling steps to see which combination provided the best results. And in this case, I think that 20 steps and a denoising strength of 0.85 or higher was good. Taking a look at the other images with higher sampling steps, even though the robotic arms looked good, the robotic hands were a bit wacky. So I went with 20 sampling steps and one denoising strength. Now that we have a good robot arm, how do we get rid of all this random stuff that was in the background? Well, I must say, I was a tad too aggressive with the masking initially, so maybe a slimmer mask would have prevented having so much junk in the background. But never fear. We can get rid of it just as easily, with some more in-painting. First, we will carefully create a mask to cover all the stuff that we don't want. To get to the smaller areas in the image, we can zoom in by holding down the Alt key and scrolling with the mouse wheel. Thank you to quite a few viewers for telling me about this setting. The default key is Alt, but this can be changed in the settings menu under the Canvas Hotkeys category. Plus, there are some other hotkeys that are useful in there. Since the background in this image is a white sandy beach, I'm going to change the prompt to white sandy beach, then change resize mode to resize and fill, batch count to four, and seed to random and generate. We can see that image number four here did a pretty good job with the beach background, but while the in-painting did change the background, it also cut off a part of the palm tree, so I'm going to add that back using in-paint sketch. Let's send our newly in-painted image to in-paint sketch and sketch out the tree trunk. Then change the positive prompt to palm tree. Make sure we are using a high enough step count. I think 60 steps should do fine. Make sure we are using the same width and height as the original image and a higher denoising strength, such as 0.85. Then generate a batch of four images with the random seed. We see that image number four is doing a pretty good job of generating the tree trunk, so we will take this image and do a final latent upscaling to finish the job. Send this image to image to image and get rid of all positive prompts. We can reduce the number of sampling steps to 40, then increase the width and height of the image by about 1.2x. We don't need the increase to be very large. Then denoising strength to 0.3, which should be good enough, but you can always try out different values with an XY plot. And that's it. The final image looks pretty good. I hope the in-painting techniques that we covered today were helpful for you. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.